Welcome to the Road to Redemption podcast with your host, Cam Williamson. Each week, Cam sets out to shatter the labels and stigmas associated with mental health awareness by giving life lessons and raw overviews of events happening around the world. Guys, it's time we talk a little business. We are partially moving over to Patreon. What do I mean by partially? The Road to Redemption podcast will still be here for free on YouTube. It will have ads. I am very selective on who I choose to represent in my ads, so there will not be a lot of them. I would like to hear your opinion on what advertisers I choose to work with. However, on Patreon, you will get ad-free episodes of the Road to Redemption podcast. If you followed me for a while, you know that every bit of content I've created over the last four years has lived for free on my YouTube page. Now, it lives over on Patreon. Only the last two years, really, will be here on YouTube, and that is selected content based around what we will be doing going forward. If it doesn't match that, it's probably over on Patreon. So if you want to see all the -the behind-the-scenes stuff building this show... You have to go over to Patreon and join the road crew because the road crew is the one that makes this show happen. You guys are out there paving the way, telling people about it, and now joining me as a Patreon. So you will be able to get live chats with me, give me your ideas, what books I should be reading, what you'd like to see me do live, streams, uh, what you want to see me do rock climbing, all kinds of different content ideas that you would like to see, what you want to see more of with me behind the scenes with my family, that kind of stuff will be moving over to Patreon. I will still do a vlog. I will still do my typical stuff, but in a more professional fashion. All the raw and unfiltered speak that I usually do on the Road to Redemption podcast will now be moving over to Patreon. I will be doing more of what you're seeing uh, of the Road to Redemption podcast now on YouTube. I will be continuing to do, where there are more short monologues based on current events or current happenings, the book reviews, those kind of things. So I hope you will go over to Patreon in the link in the description below. Join the road crew and let's get this thing going. Thank you guys so much for the support. What is going on, guys? We are back with the Road to Redemption podcast. And today we're talking about living the creative or a writer's lifestyle. Uh, What is that like? How did I fall into it? How could you have found yourself falling into it? And what does it mean? How do you deal with it if you are in it and finding yourselves in the throes of its challenges? Well, I am he, the one to tell you about said challenges. My whole life, I have felt like... I should be. Maybe I dramatized it a little too much uh, when I was young, watching movies. Maybe I did watch too many films as a kid. But I always had this Truman Show-like idea of my life, that there was a director orchestrating the events, and I was merely the actor trying to do them all right. When I would walk down the street, I would have a, a inner soundtrack going. I was constantly scoring my life. Beep, boop, boom, boom. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. You know, different parts of my life. And I have always found that to be quite an isolating thing. Myself, you would think, as this type of person, I would have gravitated more towards the arts younger. That wasn't necessarily encouraged for males, especially, especially straight males, just keeping it what it is. When I was coming up, it wasn't encouraged for straight males to be in theater, to perform music, unless you were some sort of prodigy, which if you were, you didn't grow up in Columbus, Ohio, probably, or you weren't discovered yet because there weren't many prodigies coming out of Columbus, Ohio that I know of around that time. You ended up being pushed towards business and sports and the medical field and, you know, those type of things. And I always tried to participate in them. And I always tried to make friends in that because I just wanted friends, really, when I was young. And then when I would go home, I always found myself the one that, like, never wanted to stop listening to music. I would always have music on in the background. And I would always want to, like, write my thoughts down instead of talk about them. So... I was always the loud, rambunctious, Bam Margera-esque kid coming up. And then when I was at home, I was keeping a journal and I was writing my thoughts. And and I was putting the observations out that I didn't know were not unique to me, but were unique 
to the time that I grew up in with the people that I was around. I was already having ideas like this whole nine to five work life thing isn't for me. The idea of sitting in a classroom tomorrow is physically sickening to me to the point where I'm starting to have disdain for the people when I go there and it's making me angry and I want to fight and I want to do these things. I think a lot of kids from the 90s can attach to being what we've talked about a latchkey kid before where that leaves a lot of time kind of by yourself to figure out your own hobbies and interests. I always wrote, I think, for the drama idea that I was kind of like Eminem and I was writing out all my quarrels with life with a pad and a pen kind of thing. And I never really realized that I always slipped back into somehow writing poetry or just writing journal entries that ended up being short stories about my day, right? And I, I found in writing this book that I've now written called The Road to Redemption Podcast, or <laughs> The Road to Redemption, the book, A Journey of Chasing Love and Doing Life the Hard Way, I had to realize, like, I've always been a writer. I've always been a content creator since I was 12 years old. Uh, I had a camera that my dad had around and I would grab it and I pretty much commandeered it. And I used that to make skate videos with me and my friends and like all these things. I wish I had some of that content now, just I would figure out what I could do with it. But I've always created, I've played in bands. I've done all these things my whole life. You know, I used to love art class and I used to love to learn how to draw. And I love teaching my kids how to draw. And I hope that my kids pick up musical instruments. However, it has led to such a lonely life. It doesn't lead to keeping close contact with friends when you're young, which I used to beat myself up on a lot. I have very close friends from my childhood that I really don't speak to anymore. And for the longest time, I, I thought that was such a bad thing on me that I was bad and that I was just someone that people didn't keep in contact with. But as I watch life go, uh, you know, my 20s are now past me. I'm in my 30s. I'm about to be 31 next month. And it's like I look at a lot of other people, which I don't recommend doing a lot. And I go, well, nobody really keeps a lot of, you know, friends from childhood. Some people do. Some people are very, um, you know, uh, fortunate in that way that they do keep the same friends from when they were in high school and stuff like that. And you find that that also leads to they stay in the same area and you don't know, you know, what everybody does for a living. But I think saying that everyone has their own struggles kind of sums that part up in and of itself. You can't expect a relationship formed in childhood necessarily to be the best for that those same people in adulthood. Because the things I'm finding through my writing process, the things that you bond over when you're young are not necessarily the healthiest things that you want to bond over when you're older. And that is really where I find safety, refuge in writing about romance is I think we as human beings sell parts of ourselves when we do things against what we love, whether that's people, careers, music, sports, whatever your thing is, writing, when you sell a part of yourself for the idea of what other people think your life should have been, should be, will be, when you sell a part of yourself and you say goodbye to someone you know you shouldn't, you hold on to someone you know you shouldn't, all these things that we fall in love with in movies and books, I've always loved to be the observer, but at a very young age, I realized I don't want to just observe. I want to do these things. I want to write. I want to make my own videos. I want to make my own show. I want to do these things. Well, when you're young, you don't have the resources to do that, and you don't necessarily have the know-how. And if you're not being guided to chase those things, and you don't have someone teaching you, and you don't have a mentor in it, Life can take you in other directions. And again, I think this is where we connect to art. We watch the main characters of movies and books go through the process of, okay, this is who they think they're going to be. Oh, here's where life takes them. And then how can they possibly get back to 
at least the closest they can to the original idea of happiness, right? While also not invalidating the lessons they've learned the entire way. That's where we find heroes. That's where we find favorite characters. That's where we find favorite movies and stories is from the heroic triumph of bringing yourself out of a very dark place. I don't know how good movies would be, and I don't know. Maybe you guys tell me I'm wrong. Someone comes from the perfect upbringing, mom, dad, great, supportive, never missed a game, encouraged you to do everything you ever wanted, and it worked out for you. You married your first love, you had kids, and everything went perfectly. If you know a story like that, um, where there is no turmoil, there is no sadness, there is no obstacle to overcome, I'll show you a pretty bland story. And I'll show you a, an audience that I can't relate to at all. Because in, in a way, you don't choose to be a creative. It kind of happens to you. When you look at people like Edgar Allan Poe and the tragedy that his life was filled with, he really had no choice but to be a poet. It, it, tragedy seeped out of him. And the only way he could muster to not... And, and what I would believe to be, how could he get this out without it just being a scream? It had to be written down as beautiful, elegant poetry. I think if you can learn to do that, you can be one of the greatest creatives to ever live. If you can put your mark on the world by using your story... I think those are the people that truly do change the world. Those are the people that the politicians will read books about and have to learn about. And, you know, the real leaders of the world are the ones out there experiencing life in its rawest, ugliest, darkest forms and then building themselves back up in a theatrical, amazing but honest and authentic way that people can relate to. It's not meant for everyone. Some people, you know, I've never quite understood like horror novels and authors who can get in the mindset of serial killers and write from that perspective. That has always been a little concerning to me. But in the same way, I don't create that type of art. I don't connect to those people. And I also understand I haven't struggled through every struggle. There's a lot of sides of addiction and um, different abuse types that I personally know nothing about. And so it's like I try my very best to not judge. And art is very good for making you do that. It also is why people will call you know creatives or artists, they'll call them pretentious. Because they, they can try to see the grandiosity in everything. They can try to see the point to everything. They're, they try to find purpose in things. Where if you're simply used to looking at something, hearing something, watching something at face value, and you go, oh, that was good. Eh, that was no good. They go, no, no, you ignorant ape. It's Look at it. Feel it. You know, Invest yourself in it. Take time with it. That's when people start to disconnect. Because you realize that you have now a creative talking to a non-creative. You have someone who, for whatever reason, and I have yet to figure out, does everyone start life with a fire inside them to be something unique and make a mark on this world? This episode is brought to you by Audible.com. Guys, you know that I love to read. You also know that I didn't always love to read. I got into reading by audiobooks. Audible, brought to you by Amazon, is the largest collection of audiobooks and now podcasts. They have original series, they have original music, meditations. Guys, Audible has everything. It's not just books. So, if you want to support the show and you want to get into reading or listening to books, I listen to it a lot while I'm traveling in my car. You could do the same. Click on the link in the description, join Audible today, and you'll get your first month free. Thanks for supporting the show. With something you've done, 
creating technology, creating a new auto mechanics part, this is all creative. Don't get me twisted on any of that. It is. I'm not saying you have to be in the music or the arts to be creative. You could be creative in anything you do. Innovation is creation, right? So I'm just simply asking, are there people? There was a study that recently came out that said like 50% of, and I don't even know where the study came from. It's just quoted on social media, that 50% of people walk around without an internal monologue. And I can't believe that. That there are people that walk through this life just completely, there's the wall, there's the camera, there's the light. There's, I got no thoughts outside of that. I got nothing going about any of these things. That would mean that you're brain dead, in a sense. You're not thinking about nothing. You're just, these are things. Things are coming here around me. Now, I also understand I was in the military and I'm a little hypersensitive to my surroundings. But yo, you guys don't think of anything? Not like what's good for dinner, what happened, you know, yesterday was kind of a bummer. Y'all don't have any of that? Because if you are that person, I would love for you to comment in my comment section and say, I exist. I walk through this life with no internal monologue. Okay, let's take that group of people. Or is that then the same group of people that walks around and goes, I don't take the heartbreak that I had as a kid or the love that I felt as a child and feel any need to express that on a guitar and a piano, build a thing that reminds me of my great grandmother or whatever, pottery, whatever your thing is. Nothing inside of you goes, I need to express life. And I have a theory that everything creative is based in love. Listen to any song. Any song, it's talking somehow about love. Any song. They're all talking about love. Most movies have to cover love in some way or people don't watch them. There's a, at least in a horror movie, there's a boyfriend-girlfriend couple that get murdered. Right? There's always somehow romance is always involved. I truly do believe, and call me a romantic, whatever. I believe the essence of this life is love. To what extent? I don't know. Um, I believe that once you find the authentic breath inside of you, the thing that allows you as a soul and as a human being carrying that soul to operate in unity, walking through this life. You have to do that. You have, and sure, some people will call it like a muse or whatever. What is that thing? What is that idea? What is that spark that keeps this meat sack of ours going? Because there is something. I truly believe there's something for everyone. There's an idea. There's a dream. There's a goal. There's a, a creation. And I used to fear that by chasing such things, you were chasing the grave. Because what happens if you accomplish everything you're set out to accomplish? Then what? Does life let you sit back and just enjoy the fruits of your labor? Probably not. Right? <laughs> life doesn't seem to go that way. But we hope. We all hope, whether you're creative or not, when you're working a nine to five job for 25 years to work to retire at 65 so you can sit on the back porch and drink tea, well, you're hoping that happens. You're hoping you don't miraculously drop dead at some point, even if in your later 50s, right? It's all hope and wishes. So to be a creative, I think it's to understand you need to understand you're not going to be appreciated early on because there's there's no one who's going to appreciate you and your art whatever that is until you can find value in it yourself i envy people and these people do exist who from a childhood age are able to disregard the thoughts and opinions of their parents, the people around them, caretakers, teachers, whoever, and go, I don't care. I'm doing this. I don't care what you think about it. This is me. You can beat me. You can do whatever. I'll run away. I'll live in the woods. I'll do whatever, but I'm going to do this. 
again, those are not your average Joes. And we see less of those stories. And when we do, they're oftentimes fictions. But I think a lot of us envy that idea of a story because a lot of us wish that we could have gone back and defended ourselves when we were children and gone, hey, I pretty well know who I am here. Because at 12 and 13 and 18, the same like picture that I had of if my life could be a certain way, if I could do these things every day of my life, I would be happy. They're pretty much still the same now. Some of them have just come with maturity. Some comes with my body breaking down. I change, you know, course a little bit. But also there are certain things in my life that have always just felt directed. Growing up in Columbus, Ohio, I never knew why I always had a vision that one day I should live in Tennessee and wake up and like see the fall morning, a foggy morning of a Tennessee morning. Well, now I live in Tennessee and I didn't plan that. It's just somehow life came through its crazy roller coaster and I landed in Tennessee. And it wasn't until one day I woke up with the fall foggy morning that I'm like, oh, my God. My life somehow guided me here my whole life. And then almost like a real movie, things started falling together in my mind going, this led me here to here to here to here to here. This is all this. Damn, this is a story. This is a story. This is no different than a story that I watch. It's just my story. And I've never cared about it. If I've never cared about it, why the fuck would anyone else care about it? Sorry, YouTube. Try not to swear on here. Why would anyone care on here? Why would the world care? If I don't care and it means nothing to me, if it doesn't even mean enough to me to speak about it honestly, why should anyone care? Why would anyone's life be changed by something that I don't even care about? I don't value enough to share and use my talents do you know how hard that is for me to say that I have talents, that I'm good at writing? I got my first review back from one of my beta readers, and they said this is a great read. Sure, there's some tweaks and some things we'll have to work on, but this is a great read on the first bang of my book. Do you all know what that does? I've held this project secret for two years, treating it almost as, as a secret journal writing the most intimate, vulnerable moments of my life, reliving them, rehashing them, isolating myself for like two years, unknowingly, just letting this come out and going, I don't know why I'm writing. And then all of a sudden I remember like, dude, you've written your whole life. The only thing you were ever good at in school was English and writing. But I discredited it. Just like I discredited every good and bad thing that has ever happened in my life. It's just on to the next one. What didn't work out? How can I get that back? It's like, yo. And it created a whole mess inside and only because I wasn't letting any of it out in my own way. You can go and do everything in the world. You guys know I try. I've punched heavy bags. I've fucking done. I do it all. And I enjoy everything that I've done and do. But it's also like you have to try things out so you can feel that not everything is for you. So that way also you gain empathy for other people and go, I don't get that. That's not for me. Or at least it's not for me anymore. But I got love and respect for it. Fighting. I don't fight anymore. I'm too old, man. I don't fight anymore. My hands hurt. I got a fractured elbow. I'm jacked up, yo. I got two bad knees. I got no business being in there with killers. But I have respect for people that do. I respect the art of it. And it helps me in a sense. It's helped my confidence. It helped my physical abilities. It helped my ability to protect my family. All these things I could be grateful for without now going, oh, these people are savages. These guys are animals. What the? I've sought out in my life to try everything that I've ever wanted to try. Stand-up comedy. I have my first ever stand-up set still on this YouTube channel. Sure, it's sideways. I'm working on fixing that later. <laughs> Maybe I'll fix that and clean up the audio one day. Um, I've played in bands. I've rock climbed. I've, you know, been in the military. I took the walk and I entered a cage and fought another grown-ass man. He was, like, in his 40s. And I've done all these things just to prove to myself that life is only literally a movie story if you make it one. 
But you can just go around doing things for no reason and still have no story. It's the passion behind what you're doing that makes the reader, watcher, listener care at all. Who is this person? What are they fighting for? I've always been fighting for my kids. Always. The goal of this show is to get so big that every weekend I could be on some form of transportation to see my kid's soccer game in Indiana where she lives comfortably with her mom and then be back here by the afternoon to do everything I need to do. And if I need to be back there by Wednesday, I can. And, like, that seems unrealistic. And, oh, you're just going to waste your life running in circles, spinning the hamster wheel. It's like, yeah, but I'm also going to do that over here too. So at least at the end of my life, I can say that I've documented every second of me trying my ass off for a life that is completely unrealistic. My life is unrealistic. I got a kid that lives in another state, and that's where she lives. So I can either go, oh, well, that's my situation, not going to be a part of that, or do what I've been doing. You know, you work hard to create the best relationship you can. You take what you have on top of the fact that I had to come back from being an alcoholic who had three DUIs and, like, had to battle through the court system just to see my kid. Guys, I'm coming from not nothing, negative nothing. And trying to go all the way surpassed what's supposed to be possible for anyone. If you're not a creative mind, if you're not any type of a dreamer, whatever they want to call it, it's not going to happen at all. That I can promise you. You have to have the idea that it is somewhat fathomable. I don't know if a private jet is what it would take to do that or if taking an uber would be the most efficient but right now i know i'm not in the position to even make that decision to be anywhere near every single game that both of my kids have that live in two separate states that's something that logistically i'll have to figure out when i've done enough work that i have the resources to look and go okay i have this on this day this on this this day what's the smartest most efficient way to get me to all this even if that runs me to my grave. Well, I'm their dad. That's my job. I'll write another story about it. I'll film it. You guys can watch it. But that's how this life goes for me. It's work. It's creating. It's writing. It's, it's living out experiences that give you inspiration to properly channel what it is you feel you're here to do. A lot of people aren't going to understand that, but nobody else is you. You keep a small circle around you that lets you be you, sees it for what it is, and can, at some point, if you like it, they can express to you why that makes you special. Well, I think that's good for everybody. I think we all enjoy that, whether we admit it or not. So, guys, I love you so much. It's been awesome hanging out with you, catching up with you. Uh, I've been watching a ton of hockey since boycotting the UFC. Hockey's working well this year. Blue Jackets are not playing so great, but the Nashville Preds are playing pretty well. I've been watching pretty much any game I can watch. I've been watching a lot of the Carolina Hurricanes, um, Florida Panthers, a lot of NHL, a lot of good hockey going on. If you guys want me to talk about hockey, let me know. See you in the next one. Love you.